Hello, dear viewers. I am a global nationalist. I support nationalism in my country, India, and in all countries around the globe. First off, I want to apologize for not uploading yesterday, which is according to my schedule. I will be more punctual in the future, and I hope you forgive me. Today, as per the schedule, which the where I was supposed to say this on Saturday, but I couldn't. So, yeah, as per the schedule, I am going to discuss about nationalism in a South Asian country other than India. The country I will talk about today is Nepal. Now, a bit of uh, a quick background of the constitutional setup in Nepal. The federal Nepal is a federal republic with seven provinces and it has three levels of government at one the first is a federal level the second is the provincial level and the third is the local level this is an interesting feature of nepal's constitution that many countries don't have most of them just have either their either a unitary government well part of at one so the central government having all power some have the central government and the provincial government only of but this one the constitution itself uh, gives the local level government constitutional authority which is not common in other countries it is a socialism oriented country as per its constitution and is a democratic republican state so that's a brief overview of nepal as a as a country and the current setup in the government is that uh before i continue i want to just uh, specify that in nepal the house of representatives is the house which is uh to which members of parliament are elected it is the equivalent of the Lok Sabha in India. The, in the government, the government in power has 146 seats. In that, there it is a coalition government with the Nepali Congress having 63 seats, the Maoist Center having 49 seats, and the People's Socialist Party of, of Nepal having 34 seats. And there are several parties that support the government, such as the Communist Party of Nepal, United Socialists, which has 22 seats, and two independents. And so this gives 24 seats of which support the government. And this is how they have got a majority of 146 seats which is enough to rule the country. The opposition is uh, mainly the Communist Party of Nepal, the Unified Marxist Leninists, also called as the CPN, and in brackets, UML, which is different than the Communist Party of Nepal, Unified Socialists, that is CPN, in brackets, United Socialists. Now, what I want to talk about today is the split of the party of the Communist Party of Nepal, UML, and what caused this and how this will impact Nepali politics, in my opinion. Now, to understand this split, we have to go to Wednesday this Wednesday, where the president of Nepal, uh, which is, un which like the Indian president, is a ceremonial figure and works on the advice of the Council of Ministers, headed by the Prime Minister. She basically issued an ordinance that amended the Political Parties Act of 2017, which would allow um, party to split if 40% of the members of the Central Committee and the Parliamentary Party members 
uh, agree to split if they apply to the election commission to split now this ordinance has reduced the requirement to 20 percent and because it has reduced the requirement this allowed the a faction of the cpn uml led by madhav nepal to split i wanted to talk about this because i believe that this will have a negative impact on nepal unfortunately for the people of nepal because this is include not just members of the party that are uh, just party workers not one or party president or someone this includes uh, members of the party which are also elected to the house of representatives which are also mps this will basically uh, allow mps from the cpn uml to leave the party which has already happened several of them have left and i think that this is a betrayal of the people who voted for these mps because people voted for them thinking that they would be a part of that party and if they did uh it's quite possible that if those people were not members of the political party that they were in when they stood for elections that the people would not have voted for them so this is in a sense a betrayal of the democratic voters who voted for them even the opposition members of a government of a country should respect the people who voted for them it's not just the ruling party's job and what will happen now is that Madhav Nepal's faction will form a separate party and will try to join the government in a coalition. Now, the government may think that this is a nice, like they're getting more seats, more power. However, this will also affect the Doiba's government too, because uh, other parties which are part of his coalition will have their own factions and this will cause some of them to want to split and this will cause those parties to lose a number of seats that they have in parliament which will cause the entire government's coalition to reduce its number of seats and this will probably uh, cause like a no confidence motion if he does not have majority in the parliament in the represent house of representatives and so this single ordinance is going to cause political instability across the aisle in nepal and both parties are all the parties are going to be interested in power playing in politicking and making alliances and horse trading and stuff they won't be focused on governance or in the on the part of the government and in lawmaking on the part of the legislature, which is what they're elected to do. And so this will cause the Nepali people to suffer because their entire political system will become paralyzed. This is something that happened in India when the UPA government was in power. It was called policy paralysis when the government cannot implement any policy, cannot pass any laws because of a lack of stability in the government now i have however there is also the other point of view which says that members of political party should be able to leave when they want to how now to this i believe that this should apply to those members who are not elected who are party workers who are party secretaries part of party president anyone who is not elected can leave the party because they're not going against the will of the people they're making their own decisions which will affect them and it's not a betrayal of the people who voted in the elections however those who were elected members of the party must remain part of that party for their entire tenure which is five years in nepal and they should not be allowed to leave their party once their term is done they can 
resigned from the party and stand in the elections as a separate party or part of another existing party. That is their decision. That won't uh, affect the people who voted for them in the first place because they'd have served them for a full term and it won't have uh, be betrayal of the people who voted for them. So I believe that this is an effective compromise between both points of view of on one hand maintaining political stability and fidelity to the voters and on the other hand of allowing politicians to act according to their conscience, their own beliefs. And however, unfortunately, I don't think that is what's going to happen. I think that because this is an ordinance, like in other democracies, including in India, it will have to be introduced to legislature and the legislature will have to either affirm it and pass it into law or will either vote against it and it will not become a law and the original uh, politi the political parties act will remain unamended. Now what if this ordinance phases, if it, uh, oops, sorry, if it does not remain enacted, will it cause the mod of Nepal's faction to rejoin the CPN UML? If that does, then I'm afraid that will just cause confusion, major confusion in the minds of the Nepali people. And I don't think it'll happen because I think what will happen is that when the time comes to either vote for or against the ordinance, even if the MPs who have split from the CP and UML, once they read the ordinance in Parliament in their debates, once if they actually come to the conclusion that it is a bad ordinance and that they want to vote against it because of their own political interests in maintaining uh, separation from their original party, they will vote for it. This will be a dishonest vote and this will encourage other parties and other politicians to vote dishonestly in other bills and other ordinances, which will just create spread dishonesty in the uh, political process of Nepal and will again cause the people to suffer because ultimately my concern is the well-being of the people. I'm not interested in the political interests of politicians. That is their problem. As long as the people are satisfied and happy, I'm okay. That's all that matters to me. Now, I, I'm not sure if this will be the case, but I hope that the government either withdraws this ordinance or it lapses in parliament and the CP and UML comes back together and also the coalition parties of the government do not separate and that the, the government and the opposition mem can, members can serve their full term of five years and wait for the next election because I think the people in Nepal deserve that. They deserve to have their politicians serve their full term. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you for watching. Bande Mati.